if you look back throughout the spiritual history and literature, people like Yogananda, and there, there's a lot of literature and everything, and Gary is very clear in pointing out what the, the Course talks about, the teachers of teachers, and their form can still appear. We already went over that, that when you're out of here, you're out of here, but the, the images, the symbols of Jesus and Mary, and, and depending on gurus, uh, Yogananda, you know, had many, many experiences and so forth. I think the good thing about this whole thing is that that when there, the Course isn't for everyone, and it disappears to the universe isn't for everyone. It's just one path among many, many, and that's what's so beautiful about this. But there are those who may see visions, apparitions, you know, all kinds of symbols like that, that are part of, part of what we call psychic phenomena. Even people, for example, that have had near-death experiences, that, that talk about seeing relatives we were talking about, and or moving through a tunnel, seeing this light, and many different experiences, you know, they, sometimes they live kind of like in an underground. Like, they have the experience, but they feel like they can never tell anyone else or they'll be judged as wacko and crazy. So, another benefit of something like this appears in the universe, what it does is there are a number of people on this planet that are having these kind of visions. And as Gary has said, there's nothing special about them in the sense that there are people that have healing abilities and there are many different kind of psychic abilities. And just in talking among you, I can tell that I always hear many different experiences people have, and we want to be open and accepting in the sense that nobody should have to feel like they have to be underground or be in the closet about these things. And actually, when you have symbols of people that come out and actually say, you know, this and share it openly, what that does is, we've been through this even with Things like homosexuality and everything. That's where the whole phrase coming out of the closet comes in. It's just symbolic that people feel a permission to talk about these things. There's no part in the Course where it says you will never see visions. You know, you may not use words like Ascended Masters, but if you really read it with openness, you start to realize that, that there's a range of, of psychic phenomena that are, are actually very much a common part of spirituality, and have been for centuries, and, and we can't just lock them out of the dialogue, you know, and say that it just didn't happen, you know, I think that's to accuse anybody or, or anybody about their own spirituality, um, you know, that's, that just seems to me something that you have to take it back and look at yourself about what part of myself has insecurity, if there's something somebody else is going through on their spiritual journey that I have an issue with, and we, the Spirit would say, bring it back and just take a look in your own mind. You know, don't point the finger. One finger out, three fingers back. One for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost. So, that's where yeah, really yeah. It's like, uh, you know, Cindy and I were in Mexico in January. We were just there again. We did a cruise to Mexico, but we were there in January. It was in the middle part. Mexico, Mexico City, went to the pyramids near Mexico City. I didn't know that the, the Sun Pyramid near Mexico City is actually bigger, has more mass than the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt. It's actually bigger. And uh, it was just a wonderful experience. We went to uh, a place called San Miguel Allende, beautiful place. We went to uh, Guadalajara. I thought, oh, isn't that nice? We're going to Guadalajara, a nice little Mexican village. It has 10 million people. <laughs> we don't have a city in America that has 10 million people. <laughs> and it was just amazing. And the thing about it, I wanted to mention, because Dave was mentioning these experiences that people have. Well, uh, near Mexico City, uh, there's a chapel that well, not a chapel, but they, they call it Our Lady of Guadalupe. Now, there's this uh, thing that happened 500 years ago in New Mexico City. This guy was walking in the winter up on a hill, and he saw the Virgin Mary. Virgin Mary appeared to him. It's like, you know, he, obviously he was stunned, and she said, go tell 
the priest, that I want him to build a church for me here. So the guy went and told the priest, and the priest wouldn't believe him. And the priest said, I want proof. Give me proof. Right? So he went back and he said to, to the Virgin Mary, who was still there, he said, this guy won't believe me, you know, if he wants proof. So Mary said to him, well, you know, go to the top of the hill there. This is winter. Flowers aren't growing now. There's going to be a bunch of flowers up there. I want you to pick all the flowers and carry them to the priest. That will be your proof and that I appeared. So the guy goes up to the top of the hill. Sure enough, there are all these beautiful flowers, blooming, roses, and everything. In the middle of the winter, it, 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 it can't happen. And he picks all these flowers and he, and he puts them up to his chest like this. He's got one of these long peasant shirts on, right? And uh, he carries the flowers to the ministry, uh, the priest. And, and he uh, says, here's your proof. And he drops the flowers in front of the priest. And what he didn't know was that on his shirt, there was this perfect image of the Virgin Mary. You know, this, this perfect image of what they call Our Lady of Guadalupe. It's like Our Lady of Fatima. You know, wherever she appears, they call her Our Lady of so-and-so. And, -so. and uh, there's this beautiful image of the Virgin Mary. Now, the material in that shirt should have decayed and disintegrated after 12 years, as most of the shirts do. You know, they're made of that. They, they just disintegrate. They're gone. They, they fall apart. This image has been on display at the church that the priest built for Our Lady of Guadalupe. It's been there for 500 years. And it has never decayed, never disintegrated, never faded. It still looks exactly the same as it did 500 years ago. It's not a painting. They've tested it. It looks like a beautiful painting, but it's not a painting. They've tested it. There's no paint there. You know, and the reason I bring that up is to show that uh, there are really incredible things that are possible, you know, even on the level of form. But that's not where the miracle is occurring. The miracle is occurring at the level of the mind. So if you read about the Dead Sea Parting, you know, that may be what it looks like, but that's not where the miracle is really happening. The miracle is actually happening at the level of the mind, and then the Dead Sea parts. The miracle happens at the level of the mind. Then you have an image of the Virgin Mary that lasts for 500 years. And Cindy and I have seen it. We were there. And, uh, you know, and somebody's trying to blow it up. They, they put a bomb in front of it and tried to blow it up. And there was this cross there. And the cross completely stopped the bomb, and this image was never hurt, it was never damaged. I mean, there are all kinds of incredible stories involving, you know, this place. Uh, the people there, they're just so faithful. You know, it's like, you'll never get a more Catholic place in the world than Mexico. It's like, completely Catholic. And we saw, like, these kids, you know, they're, they're kind of like, uh, they walk for all across the country. Then when they get near this church and they get to the cement part, they start crawling and, and crawling themselves to worship uh, you know, Mary. And I really think that what made that particular event possible was just the faith and you know, the ideas that the people have in their minds and, and the, the kind of like mysticism and, and belief in saints and things like that that they have. So now I go here and uh, I got the distress of the universe. It, it's something like really good in Mexico. And I got all these uh, people that are into A Course in Miracles and they're all Catholics. And they all got like these little saints on their sleeves and little things sewed into their uh, you know, shirts and pants. And they're like wicked Catholics. And, and yet at the same time, they believe in our in person. And they say, sure, of course that could happen. Why wouldn't saints appear? You know? So it's like really interesting uh, to see. So we love Mexico, and we always have a good time when we go there. But uh, what makes all these events, all these miracles that you read about in the Bible and stuff like that, they really do happen. And the reason that they happen is because of the power of the mind. It's really uh, the mind where the miracle is occurring, and then things show up out there on the screen. You know, that seem to be the miracle. But the miracle isn't really out on the screen. The real miracle is where the projector is, where the cause is, which is the mind.